What's up ladies and gents, this is Casey Kid coming at you with another Destiny video. Holy crap, I I don't have much other words than holy crap. I'm, I'm at a loss for words right now. We got our patch, we got our patch, but in it, and the things that are coming from this, oh man, oh man, if you're a fan of drama, craziness, and just utter insanity, well, today in Destiny is all for you. It is literally all for you. This patch, as far as a player, was definitely not what we hoped for. As far as somebody who's making a channel that involves creating videos and having something to talk about, holy crap, it's a dream come true. Holy crap, again, those are the words. But before we get into all of it, let's go ahead and show our sub of the day. We've got D Brown. D Brown alone on Valentine's Day, say it's not so, bro. And seriously, D Brown has been a sub. D Brown's been subbed to me before he subbed to the lab, before he subbed to Morning After Kill, before he subbed to freaking Markiplier and Leafy is here. Come on, now this is a legit sub for real. And again, of course, I can go ahead over to everybody's profile. I can check out if they like the videos, if they subscribe, if they leave a comment. It's how you get to be the featured commenter, subscriber, liker of the day. Indeed. Well, let's move on to the big topic at hand. Okay, so before we get to that though, I just want to say, you know, I am a very positive person for the Destiny community. I feel like what we do here is we generally try to look at things as far as it affects the everyday player. The person who doesn't get to play 8 hours a day or anything, the non-pros, none of us are like that. We're here trying to look at the game to make it better. We play it because we enjoy playing the game. I've played this game more than I've played pretty much any game pretty much in my life, and I've played a lot of video games. I play it just because it's fun and I enjoy it. So a lot of times the stuff we talk about is typically good, but whenever there's bad stuff to talk about, we absolutely have to do that. And I think what we've got right now, right here today, is we've got a steaming pile of bad. And because of that, we can't shy away from that. We can't shy away. We'll try to see the good stuff in it, but we've got some bad stuff. We have definite bad stuff that we have to talk about and we have to address. So we've got the bungee patch. And I just want to kind of show you a little bit of a clip, just a few snippets that I took out of the clip from the live stream that Bungie did. Again, we talked about and we reviewed the live stream, we reviewed the stuff right there, but in the live stream they said that this wasn't everything. This wasn't everything, but this was the stuff that they wanted to talk about. But I just want to say right now, what was in the live stream was nearly everything that's in the patch, minus one just huge, massive, glaring thing. Again, these are words directly from Bungie's mouth, directly from their mouth, not me putting any words in their mouth, about their design philosophy. So take a listen, just real quickly, listen to this. And so, uh, yeah, so the goal is not to nerf anything into the ground. Uh, in fact, it is preferably just that every weapon has its place. And so, uh, and for pulse rifles, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the aim is not, again, to, to nerf those into non existence. In fact, I believe some of the changes we've made to both people will be very happy about. I'm sure you're aware that that is a, a very co popular and common narrative uh, among the community right now. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Stop taking everything we love and nerfing it. Take the things that need to be better to be at that level and give me an incentive to use them instead. Or give people who love using them their own time to shine. Right, exactly. And so while we have to balance that out against time to kill because we don't want the primary time to kill kills to get too high where they then stomp on special weapons in the same way that shotguns have been stomping on primaries. Yeah. Uh, but the goal is definitely to give you reasons to run everything and less about giving you reasons to not run something. If that makes sense. Okay, that's exactly what we want to hear. That's what we say. We say it. They pretty much quoted us verbatim. They said, we do not want to see things nerfed. We want things brought up and buffed instead of other things nerfed. They said this. They said this is pretty much how they go about designing things. In my reaction to the live stream, I said, I don't get that feeling. I made a video long, long ago where I said that I didn't feel that was Bungie's philosophy. But this is what they said. This is what they directly said to us. So one of the first exercises that I wanted to do was I went through the patch. I went through the patch and I read every line of it. And I went ahead and gave it a mark. Was this a nerf or was this a buff? And I just counted them. I wanted to see how many nerfs versus how many buffs we ended up getting in the patch. And I feel I was pretty generous in both cases. If it was something that was definitely a nerf, it got a nerf point. If it was something that was going to be positive for the game, like the hunter knives getting a solar buff, 
that's what I want to hit. I put it as a buff. I count it as a buff, even if it's not going to be a buff in PvP. It's still a general overall buff. So that's how I went and looked at things. And I found that there were 26 nerfs and 14 buffs. So 26 nerfs and 14 buffs. And there are actually 10 additional nerfs to that. So do with that what you will. So at most, 36 nerfs. Even if 10 were unintentional. But we'll get to that in just a second. 26 nerfs and 14 buffs is what's in the patch. So to me, that is not taking the items that are not being used and bringing them up. That is going and looking at your most used numbers and just taking them down without regards to why they're being used the most. Again, I've said it before, nothing that was in the game right now was overpowered. Some people disagree with that statement, but that's because those people really don't understand what overpowered is. Overused is not overpowered. Being really good because other stuff is just really bad is not being overpowered. Overpowered is whenever something literally breaks the game. Like Vex Mythoclass. That thing used to be overpowered. Nothing that was in the game right now would even be able to tickle the butt of the old Vex Mythoclass. No way. So no, things were not overpowered. Things were just being overused because they were the best of other bad options. So again, I have to stress and I have to reiterate the same thing that people are saying. We do not like nerfs. We like buffs. There's a reason why we don't like nerfs and there's a reason why we like buffs. And doing stuff like this, again, 26 nerfs, 14 buffs, you're really not helping to make the bad things good. All you're doing is taking things that we're fond of and making them worse. Not the right idea. Not the right idea. So that's not starting off very great with the patch. But it got worse. Like I said, I said that there were 10 additional nerfs in there. And that's because the changes to Hungering Blade apparently got promoted to all the other pretty much lifesteal perks. Whether they were actual perks on a subclass or weapons. So things like the Red Death, the Soros Regime, the Voidwalker, Cauterize on the Titan. All of those things are now nerfed exactly like Hungering Blade on the Blade Dancer. And they didn't even mean to do that. They didn't even mean to do that. And oh my goodness, I feel so bad for Cosmo and Deej. These guys have to sit out there and listen to all of us rant and scream. And I mean, some people will have vitriol coming out their blood in veins. It is absolute insane. I feel so bad for them because those guys are sitting there and they know this is coming down the line. Because what was said was, you know what? We kind of knew that we had this glitch right near the end. We just found it out. But it was, we couldn't really fix it, so we felt it was just better to go ahead and release the patch, even though it's bugged, and just see what you guys think about it. Well, obviously what everybody thinks is they absolutely despise it. They didn't like it whenever it was on the Blade Dancer. They're certainly not going to like it whenever it kind of infiltrates all of their exotics and their other favorite classes of the game. No way. You can imagine what Reddit in the Bungie forums look like. You can imagine what YouTube is going to look like tomorrow after my video and other videos get out there. It is going to be absolute insanity. The fact that they didn't just go ahead and scrap this or delay it is mind-boggling. I mean, let's be a little bit honest with ourselves. It's a no-win situation. So stuff breaks in programming. Stuff breaks in programming. And it sucks. And it's a no-win situation. So you don't release it, you delay it, and you catch flack all over the place. Or you release it, and you've got a broken game that doesn't work as you intended, and you catch a lot of flack. I personally think I'd rather go ahead and take the flack for delaying it and have my game out there that's been working for who knows how long and just leave it out there and go ahead and get this stuff patched. I would never have released this patch. Never, ever, ever. And here's the thing. Okay, so they say they play and they test the game every single day. How did nobody notice this on all of these different perks until the last minute. How did nobody notice that their Voidwalker wasn't functioning as normal, or the Red Death wasn't functioning as normal, or the Soros Regime was not functioning as normal? How did they not notice this stuff? And if they're not noticing this stuff, why are they your playtesters? Why are they the people that are in charge of the quality assurance of the game? Because are they testing and looking at the right stuff? I mean, these are things that were all directly impacted. These would have been some of the first things that I actually looked at because I personally would have, you know, not knowing the code for Bungie and Destiny, I probably would have looked at these things because I would say that these things function just like something else that we're going to change. Let's make sure that these don't also unintentionally get changed. That's pretty much just 101 in trying to test stuff out. That's that's just something that I would have personally done. So I 
I, uh, it's just so difficult to go ahead and really put a positive spin on that because releasing something that's bugged and then saying, well, you guys test it out later, that that is just not acceptable. Not for a game that's been out for three years. That's not acceptable. Not an acceptable thing to go ahead and put out on its player base. I mean, that's pretty much something that you get for a free-to-play game. Not Destiny. Not one of the biggest video game releases pretty much ever. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't get behind that. And then finally, I think maybe one of the last draws is some of the nerfs that they did to exotics. Obviously, one thing people expected was they expected the Young Wolf's Howl heavy ammo cost to be reduced from 10 down to 5. That happened? Great. Awesome. That is exactly how it should be. People expected Shinobu's Vows to be nerfed, and they are. Apparently, Shinobu's Vows sent out some additional Seekers. They're going to send out one less additional Seeker. So, overall... Probably a good thing. I never really had a huge problem with Shinobu's Val. I know a lot of people did, so that's fine. You know, whatever. I'm okay with that. But then, I don't know if anybody's really talking about the Universal Remote nerf, but that thing got its magazine size reduced from 5 down to 3 and slower reloading. Not to mention the gun is already pretty much terrible. They keep talking about the Universal Remote as a precision weapon, and it still gets precision damage if you aim at the head. Well, you should never ever be firing the Universal Remote at the head if you're trying to get long range kills. That doesn't work. We proved that long, long ago. That does not work. Anybody firing the Universal Remote at the head of a Guardian expecting to get a long range kill is completely doing it wrong. But the final straw had to be the truth. The truth got its magazine size nerfed from three down to one. Why? Just why? <laughs> There's literally no reason to do that. None at all. Heavy ammo is barely used or usable in PvP as it is. It's one. That's it. One rocket. And you're certainly never going to use the truth in PvE anyway, so what was... The there was no point in doing that. I don't know. You've got some problems here with this patch right now, and you've got a lot of PR problems, so I'm really curious how you're going to go ahead and fix all this stuff, Bungie, but I wish you the best. Anyway, guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button and subscribe to the channel. Check out these awesome videos. Good luck with your raids, your drops, your patch, and I'll see you around in Destiny. Hashtag holy crap.